an enterprise structure from the perspective of SD has three parts from the perspective of an SD consultant. This is finance. Okay, this rectangle is finance and this is sales and this is logistics. Finance, sales, logistics. Now for a consultant working on MM, he is more focused on logistics. A finance consultant is worried about more elements in finance, more operative and organizational elements in finance. The reason why I'm saying we need to know a bit about finance and sales and logistics is when you perform a sale, the sale has to be accounted for in finance and the sale has to be done using the sales elements and the sales has to be delivered using logistics. So all these three functional areas come together when you represent an enterprise structure of the company that's relevant for an SD consultant. So as an SD consultant, you should know a little bit of finance org elements, a little bit of sales org elements, and a little bit of logistics org elements. In this chapter, we are going to focus on the financial element or the financial org elements. Now, I'm using the word org element. What's an org element? I'll give you a very, very rough example. If a bank, say Bank of America, is writing an application for online banking, it will represent in its code or in its system the major elements, right? How is the bank structured? You know, what are the branches? because a customer can make a transaction in a branch and you should represent that branch in the system. Okay, this is the Boston downtown branch or the Houston midtown branch. Uh, let's say you're a high net worth individual and you have privilege banking with Bank of America. Which privilege banking manager or group of people responsible for dealing with privilege banking has done your transaction so who is the sales manager who has done the transaction for you and the list goes on and on the point being we are trying to capture the major elements within which we are trying to do the transaction we are trying to do a transaction in a branch with our sales manager and the details from that point on could be very bank specific so we're not here to talk about that. The reason why I gave you this example is so that you understand that when you do a transaction, when a customer comes to us and does a transaction, in case we are GE, medical systems or healthcare, and the customer comes to us and we create a sales order for him, we would have to say, okay, we have created a sales order for this customer in this company we have to represent the company in the system, right? Are we doing it in Singapore? Or are we doing it in the US or UK? And who has done it? And what channel did we use to sell the goods to the customer? These are all the different org elements. These are not real physical entities sometimes. For example, a plant is a physical entity. It exists, but a sales group it's really virtual, right? It doesn't exist. It's a group of people that we are calling as an org element. Most of the time, it's, it's a virtual grouping or virtual representation of certain things that are required to run your business and report on that part of the business. Now, in a subsequent section, I'm gonna talk about what really is the use of enterprise structure. But up until then, let's really go through the definitions of all the different org elements and create them in the system 
before we really go and understand the philosophy behind why SAP asks us to do enterprise structure definition. Let me erase this. We have so much to do in finance. Okay, so in finance, there are three or four different org elements that uh, are important for SD consultants. But at this point, I'm only going to focus on two org elements or rather one and then another to a certain extent. The topmost org element is called a company. In the case of GE Healthcare, this would be GE Healthcare. This is the company that reports the profits at the end of the quarter or at the end of the year and this is the company for which there is a stock ticker that trades in public so on and so forth everything rolls up to this entity in the US that doesn't mean that GE healthcare doesn't do business in India or Africa or Australia it does business there and all the profits are rolled up to this entity in the US called GE healthcare it could be public limited, it could be a private company, it doesn't matter. Now, underneath that, you have the actual legal entities that are doing the business. For example, so this is GE US. So this is a legal entity that's doing business in the US as G Healthcare. Now, the, this is GE UK it's the same company but in the UK it has to operate you know in the legal restraints of that particular country it has to show its books to the country's taxmen whenever there is an audit it has to be shown to the respective officials or um, all the sales for that country if you want to report on top of it everything is at this level so same with GE Canada. So there is a GE Canada, right? GE India, GE Singapore. The list goes on and on and on. Most of the time, every country that, that, that a company operates in has to have a legal entity in that country. So the, the typical, you know, colloquial name for this is called legal entity and in SAP terms this is called company code so this is what SAP calls it you could call it a company code in SAP but outside of SAP if you talk to the general business they call it a legal entity so what's a legal entity a legal entity is how a company is represented in the books and that representation needs to be done in SAP as well. So GE US is represented in SAP as a company code. And GE UK is also represented in the system as a company code. So from the finance section of enterprise structure, this is your focus. Because you almost never deal with this. The company, very rare. You will never have to deal with it. For all practical purposes, company code is what you'll be dealing with. Every bit of configuration that you do with respect to finance, whatever little that you do, is always with the company code. There are some other org elements that we'll talk about when we come to the respective areas. All right, so in finance, the main org element is the company code. It's also called a legal entity. And that's, that's how a company is represented in the books and in the system. And all accounting is done at the company code level. Not at the company level, but always at the company code level. Uh, this is the org element at which SAP does accounting at the highest level.